Praise God. So glad you joined us today. We are looking at the names of God in relationship to how they uh, connect to the covenant that we are in with Jesus Christ. This is a month, the month of ER, is a powerful month. It's a transitional month in a sense. We are learning how to connect with God. We're learning our benefits that we have in a covenant relationship or a covenant ruled relationship with Christ. And I hope you are receiving the message and you're opening up your heart to have a mind shift. So this is a very big part of the message today. We're looking at sifting for a shifting. So the Lord is saying to us that he wants to bring us into our next season, but in order to bring us into the next season and to expand us uh, before that shifting takes place, there has to be a sifting. And in regards to Jehovah Jireh, who is our provider, we need to look at our mindsets of how we see God in um, connection to how we think about him. Do we simply think of him as someone who died on the cross for us and now basically we're just living our life the same old way every day? We're not in a true connection with the Lord and we don't see him as our healer. We might be very quick to say, well, he's my savior, but maybe you've never really thought of him as your healer. See, that indicates you need to have uh, a change of mind or you need to repent because you're not seeing Christ in his fullness. You're, you're not opening up yourself so the Holy Spirit can reveal to you the full gospel of Jesus. So in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Christ is speaking and he is saying in verse uh, 28 through 30, come to me, very important, in order for you to start having mind shifts in your life. In order for you to think differently, the first thing you got to do is come to Jesus. You got to go where he is. Many times people pray that Jesus will come down where they are, that Jesus will come into their mystery, that Jesus will come into their self-pity, that Jesus will come in to their mess of their life and to fix everything. But that's not what the scripture teaches about Christ. You're supposed to come out of your mess, lift yourself up to the Lord, and come to him. Come to me, all of you who are weary. So it's not that the Lord is ignoring the fact that you're weary or that you're carrying heavy burdens, that you're in a mess. He's not turning a blind eye to that. He's just saying, in order to get out of that, you've got to come to me. All of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. So that's a shifting then of a mindset that we have that the Lord needs to come down into our mess. When in fact, we need to come to the Lord. We draw near to God and he will what? Draw near to us. We draw near to him in faith. And because we're drawing near in faith, that activates the presence of the Lord. And things then will begin to change in our life. He then says, take my yoke upon you. Take the government of the Lord on you. One thing I have seen throughout this last month or so of sheltering in place is that people are very fearful. And they're turning to the government for safety. And they're following the government. Now, I don't have any problem with you obeying the law, but I do have a problem with people looking at the government of their nation as being their safety valve or their go-to thing. That they can think that if they just trust their government, that everything's going to be okay. No, because many of the governments of the land in this world are not ruled by righteousness they're actually ruled by lies and we have to learn how to discern what is coming down through our governmental authorities that is truly of the holy spirit so the best thing we can do is get into a covenant relationship with the lord where we are governed by him where the spirit of god is showing us what to do and how to move 
Jesus says, let me teach you. And so you have to position yourself to have a mindset, well, the Lord can teach me. I can humble myself and I can change the way I think because I want the Lord to teach me. I want the Lord to show me his wisdom and I want to obey it. And this is the reason why you can allow Jesus to teach you because he says, I am humble and gentle at heart. If you are not a teachable person, that just means that you're a very proud person. And you can't really come near to Jesus for him to teach you because Jesus is basically at the core of his soul is humble and also gentle. And as you become humble and gentle and submit yourself to the Lord, you're going to find rest for your souls. Verse 30, for my yoke, my government is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. So we have to look at our lives and see where we have not spent time with the Lord, where we've only looked at the Lord as a side benefit, or we've only given to the Lord our spare time instead of our precious time. That is going to take a shifting of how you think. But most often there has to become a sifting in your life and what do I mean by sifting? That means God is going to start shaking you in some area of your life to sift you out of mindsets so that he can actually shift you higher. Luke 22, 31 through 32 says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift each of you like wheat. But I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. So the Lord Jesus is talking to Peter and he's saying that the devil wants to sift you. And so this is a truth even for us today. You know, Simon was fully sifted before he was shifted to a higher level of thinking. Uh, actually, Simon thought that he was really tight with Jesus because he said, I'll never leave you, the Lord. You, you have the words of life. Where would I go? You know, I will follow you. But we know the story, don't you? We know that he sat by the campfire of the Lord's enemies. And as he sat by the campfire of the Lord's enemies, something happened and he betrayed denied knowing Jesus actually three times. So that was the shaking for Simon, for Peter, because he had a thought of himself and he was thinking a certain way that wasn't really true. And the Lord allowed the devil to come and shake him out of that. Now we know that just as Jesus said, he said that he would pray for him. And, he, and, he, and Christ is interceding for you right now. Anything you go through, that the Lord is allowing you to go through to sift your thinking. I guarantee you that the Lord Jesus Christ is interceding for you during that time. Now, the devil wants to shake you so hard that you will lose your faith. But Jesus does just the opposite. He allows the enemy to shake us, not that we would lose our faith, but that there would be things removed from our life, impurities ways of thinking that are counter to our faith. He actually wants to secure our faith. And that's what he was saying to Simon. Uh, when you repent, when you have a change of mind, that's what repentance is. Just simply get that. Don't make repentance a religious word. Think of repentance as, I'm going to have a different way of thinking about this. I've used to think this way, about the Lord being my provider. I used to think about money in this way, but I'm now going to change that way of thinking. I'm going to repent. And when you repent, then you're going to be in a position to help your brothers and your sisters in the Lord. So God is now sifting many of us. We are in situations that are requiring great faith on our part. 
And that is a good thing. He wants to allow the enemy access to our life. We do fall into trial and tribulation, not to actually falter in our faith, but for our faith to get stronger. So how do you look at the Lord? Do you see Jesus? Now be honest with yourself as your provider in everything. God is Jehovah Jireh. That means that God provides. Now he doesn't only provide for you financially, but basically he provides for you wisdom in every area of your life. If you have the wisdom of God operating in your life, you are open to the wisdom of God. You allow yourself to humble and Jesus teach you. He's going to give you wisdom to navigate through this earth walk. Now, you have to have an intention that when he speaks to you, that you're going to obey him. So the Lord's going to give you wisdom in every area. That's the way he provides for you. He gives you wisdom to handle your finances. He gives you wisdom to know how to move in life so that when you see opportunities to advance, you won't cower from them, but you will boldly walk out in them. He gives you wisdom uh, to provide for you in relationships, in friendships. Friends are ways that God provides for you. The Lord wants to be your provider in every walk of life. He wants to provide for you uh, how you deal with your children in life. Wisdom brings a provision so that you will gain in every area of your life. So don't put Jesus in a religious box. You have to get to a point where you're open to allow the Lord to fill every need in your life. Philippians 4.19 says, And my God will supply every need of yours. So that covers everything in your life. Wherever there's a need, whether it's financial, or whether it's in relationships, or whether it's in guidance, you're, you're seeking God to give you the right answer, to put you on the right path in life, whatever it is. And my God, because God is... God, Lord God, Jehovah, will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Now, that's a very big key there. He doesn't provide you according to the natural. He provides for you spiritually. So all that you need is going to come through your faith walk with the Lord. And as you link up with the Lord through your faith, the Lord is going to manifest what is in heaven for you on the earth. There are going to be times where you are not going to have what you need. It's not manifested yet, but it will manifest as you begin to believe and you seek the Lord with a spirit of faith. Now, to get to that place in your life where you actually live by faith, you're going to have to be sifted. And sifting is not always pleasant. I had a dream last night. I want to share it with you. I believe it has a lot to do with the message today. And oftentimes, uh, the Holy Spirit speaks to me through dreams. One of the main things I seek from the Lord is what he wants to message to his people. I am a messenger. I find myself seeking the Lord all the time. I find myself opening up to God, saying, Father, what is it that you want your people to know? And sometimes the Lord speaks to me in a very still, quiet voice. Many times the Lord will speak to me through the scripture. He'll, he'll give me an, a, an impulse to look up a certain scripture. Uh, and, and there it is right there. And the Lord will begin to speak to me. And I'll know by how the Lord is moving. The Lord will give me comp confirmations on what to speak, but a, one way he does speak to me continually uh, is dream. And when he gives me a dream, I remember it. And as I wake up, the Lord will actually speak something to me that correlates with the dream. So having said all that, 
I just want you to know that the Lord provides wisdom in many different ways. So don't put the Lord in a box when you're seeking God. Everything the Lord gives to you will be backed up by Scripture. So anything that you dream or anything that God gives you in the form of a vision, it will bear witness with the scriptures and it will bear witness with the Holy Spirit who lives inside of your life. So in this dream, I'm seeing this well put together man. It's a very tall man, very well dressed man. I would say that he's young, maybe uh, late 30s, maybe early 40s. And he's in a church setting. I would say that he's in a religious setting. And I'm looking at him in the dream, observing him. And I see that he's very strong and that he is guiding people. And he's telling people to do certain things. And then the, the dream changes. And uh, we're out of the religious system. And he and I are together. And I'm just talking with him. And I'm with his wife. And we're speaking, and I'm saying, you appear to be uh, very well put together, and you, you appear to be very confident in how you're working with people. And he looks at me, and he says to me, well, the reason why I'm confident is I drink alcohol before I speak to people. And immediately when he says that, I'm gripped uh, I'm, I'm with with regret that this young man is moving this way. And I know immediately I must speak to him. And then I begin to say, I know a better way for you. And when I say that, the young man opens his heart to me and he says, well, what is it? And I say to him, you need to speak in tongues. And when I say that, he begins to just laugh and scorn what I'm saying. And he says, that's ridiculous. I'm not going to do that. And his wife does the exact same thing. And I'm reminded of Adam and Eve. You know, Eve was deceived by Satan at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And she took of the tree because she thought it would make her wise in her own eyes. And in a sense, it did make her wise in her own eyes but it caused great destruction. And she gave it to her husband who was with her. So when I saw the reaction of this couple to what I had to say about speaking in tongues, I knew immediately that I had to part company with them. Because though they were moving in a religious setting, they were not moving by the Spirit of the Lord. They could not humble themselves and understand the power of speaking in tongues. We know that speaking in tongues is a spiritual language, and it's done in faith. And we know that it actually builds our spirit man. It causes us to be stronger, and it causes us to have more confidence in God. But it's going to entail faith on your part to embrace that to embrace that part of your spirit life by which God will provide for you. And after I had the dream, I immediately woke up. And when I woke up, I saw a sifter. It was a flour sifter, what you bake with. I saw it very clearly. And the Lord showed it to me two times. And I remember thinking, sifting. God is saying we must have a sifting. So later as I was seeking the Lord, it came clear to me that the Lord is saying, I am working right now in a way that perhaps people aren't aware of. I am doing some sifting with my people. I am shaking my people putting them in situations where they're going to have to seek me by faith. And I want you to know that Jesus Christ is interceding for us all and that he is for us. He's not against us. And even though these times may seem difficult for many, the Lord is up to something good in your life. 
He wants to get you to a place where no matter what the situation is, no matter how challenging the situation is, the Lord is going to provide for you. He wants you to get your eyes off the natural and begin to get your eyes upon the things of the Spirit. We need to learn how to walk by faith in every area of our lives. And when I say faith, I want you to realize that faith is a spiritual thing. Faith is not something you can hold in your hand. Faith is a beautiful spirit that causes you to believe in something that you can't see with your natural eyes. It's the evidence of things not seen for the things that are hoped for. Faith is like your title deed. I don't see it right now. It's not manifesting right now, but it doesn't matter because I already have it. That is how God provides for you. God is spirit. You must be in spirit to connect with God and to benefit from his provision because it comes through the currency of faith. Now, many people believe in order to have their needs met, it has to come through the currency of money. And so they focus on money. They think about money. They pray about money. Uh, They look at money as their sole provision. And if they lack money, they're very anxious in life if they're in a time where they can't put money in their hand or have tons of money in their bank account, when their 401 drops very precipitously, they get very nervous about it. And see, it's all about what they're seeing. The Lord is saying, I want to sift my people because I want them to begin to see me as their provider. And I provide through their faith in me. Philippians 4, 7 says, The Lord is at hand, meaning that the Lord is always near to you. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. That includes everything in your life. So any area that you're anxious about, the Holy Spirit is saying, I don't want you to be anxious about that area because I want you to learn of Jesus that he is your provider in that area. But in everything by prayer, prayer is a matter of faith. And supplication with thanksgiving, you thank the Lord always. You're thanking the Lord before you see the supply manifested because you know it's coming. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So the peace of God is going to flood your heart. And peace is a gift of the Spirit. It's a spiritual matter. It's not the peace of the world. It's the peace of the Spirit. And that kind of peace is knowing that you don't like anything, that you're whole. No matter the natural, you know deep down you're whole. You don't lack anything, and you will not lack anything. Why? Because the Lord, Jehovah, your provider, Jehovah Jireh, again and again, know him as that. But sifting has to take place in your life. Some people have a hard time being generous and understanding that in order for you to be provided for, one of the basic rudimentary laws is to be a giver. To give. You want to be forgiven? You want to have friends? Well, first of all, you got to forgive. You want to have friends? Well, first of all, you got to give yourself in friendship. You want to receive then you have to give. 
Sifting flour is like that. Sifting flour is to separate and to aerate the flour. It actually causes the flour to get very fluffy so that it can absorb liquid and so that it combines with other ingredients. When you aerate soil, uh, it's the same thing. You poke holes in the soil so that water can get down in those holes. And when you plant, the roots can get in those holes and can be supplied with water. And water is significant of the Holy Spirit. You and I have to let God sift us so we can get a little holy, if you know what I mean. Holy in the sense of he can make us whole. He can make us holy, righteous in him. But also, he makes us open to him and open to people so people can give to us and what we can give to other people look at luke 6 38 give and it will be given to you good measure pressed down and shaken together running over will be put into your lap for with the measure you will use it will be measured back to you praise the lord do you see that sifting is all about God moving out of us anything that is hindering us? The Lord wants to make us open to him, open to his ways so that he can align uh, us to himself. He is positioning you so you're going to have a great shift coming as we press in to pass over. Let the sifting happen. Begin to repent, change your way of thinking so you can enter the kingdom of God where the Lord is your provider. Now, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, to be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, make you whole. Amen. 